Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan J. Owens here. Uh, so basically, as in the, the IGTV, I want to talk a little bit about why Pro Volley 101, why Elite Volley Fam. Um, and in order to use this as an education tool, telling you about the journey from the beginning is really important because of the things you're going to hear and you start to associate these things with your Pro Volley journey in some way. So some of it is me building up the business and how that went. Um, other of a lot more of it is why we do certain things why that matters to you athletes and what you get out of your relationships with agents and this whole thing because the last question uh, I was asked only one question no shame in that I love the fact that over a thousand people looked at the story but um, the most rewarding part of playing pro so I'm gonna answer that at the end all right so uh, let's just take it back to the beginning a little bit about me so I started as a junior in high school I had no idea you could play indoor volleyball I thought it was Top Gun that was the only volleyball that existed I went in my skateboard shoes to a tryout I made that team um, I played JV as a middle blocker I didn't know how to do anything and even know how to jump I was skateboarding rollerblading snowboarding all these extreme sports and then the next year or they brought me up at the end of that JV year I went to the senior team uh, didn't really play I sat on the bench and the next year I was a starter on the varsity team and I played club that whole summer in between, but I didn't travel. So that means I didn't get scouted out of high school, so I ended up going to a school for snowboarding. That ended after just one semester because I pretty much missed volleyball and it was hard to be away from home for the first time because I had split with my father. So at that point that meant I was alone. I uh, didn't know my mom and, and with my father out of my life, it meant doing everything alone, providing for myself, and there were two major friends in my life, and this is why I think mentorship is so huge in my life, that said, hey, uh, you need help, I'm gonna help you. So both of them let me stay in their homes during that period where I'm just trying to find my feet. Uh, I played my second semester of freshman year for an NAI school, a D3 school called Dominican University with my brother, my best friend, Chris Barnes. Then both realizing that we had better levels that we could achieve more not that we hated our team or anything we loved it we decided to pursue that and i think the lesson out of all of these things that i'm about to tell you is that no matter what you want if you dream it and you believe it and you truly feel and you see the examples of better volleyball and you think that you have that you have to go after it but the massive thing you've got to understand is that wherever you're at always challenge yourself a certain percentage more but don't try to jump in 20 percent 30 percent better than you already are unless you get that rare opportunity to go play for some big team that says you're a project we're going to help you grow and all that stuff so i went out to cali to a juco to orange coast college uh, pushed myself a lot. That was the beginning of my journey. I was just like pushing myself uh, while actually getting to Dominican University and that comes in handy as an agent because from that point on, even though I got scouted by some schools, um, some pretty awesome schools that I loved, I ended up going to another NAI school because my top choice fell through, which was Pepperdine with Mark Dumpy. And so I lost two more years of school and I had to go to one year and I decided, screw it, I'm going pro. I met a German at JUCO in California and I love that concept. I had no idea pro existed. And that to me is shocking because we should know that pro exists. And I think in women's it's a little bit different than men's, but now we're both kind of getting there. So what happened is I went overseas, I found my team, I did everything. I, I kept finding teams after teams. A couple bad things happened, you know, an agent, uh, really did not help me with a team who wasn't paying me. I was not, I was eating biscuits and cookies and croissants for about two months and it was tough. Uh, I ended up sleeping on a, a bathroom floor in Czech Republic in the middle of the winter, um, not knowing what the hell I was going to do, not having any backup plan, not having any money, not having any help except for the people who would say, hey, I can lend you a hand, like that Danish teammate who had a newborn baby and his wife staying in a one bedroom, actually like a studio, and I was in the bathroom. And that moment, it dawned on me, 2004, I had been overseas for two years straight, uh, two and a half years at that point, and I said, you know what? I know that I have this level to get to where I wanna be. So I decided to go for a national team. I said, okay, I can't do anything else. I've been over here for two and a half years. I have nothing. I'm gonna go back home to my friend's home and I'm going to reset. I'm gonna get in. 
better shape. I'm gonna get a higher volleyball level. I'm gonna try for the national team and I'm gonna make that freaking national team. And luckily at that time, Doug Beal moved out. He moved up to CEO of USA Volleyball, I believe, or president. And then Hugh McCutcheon came in. I sent my stuff, I tried out, I made that team. Uh, they asked me, you know, I was a middle first through high school and college. As a pro, I kind of lied to my Belgian team, said I was an opposite. So trust me, when I had to hit those high balls, it was terrible. But they took me because I was super athletic. And that was an example to me of my body and my physical attributes can help me get somewhere. But then it was a hard road because I had to learn the emotional part. And at USA, I had been opposite at that point for two and a half years, right? Um, and I had two failed contracts. Uh, and one successful contract and it was amazing to me because I learned how far behind I was emotionally I thought I was strong I thought I could do things I understood that I I had some worries and I, I would make errors and screw stuff up but on that national team another thing that I found out is I asked everybody uh, Reed um, Pretty uh, Clay Stanley all the guys that were there I said like how do you find an agent that you can trust and they all said man it's so tough so all you gotta do is you gotta basically find the person that you can trust the most, even if that's just a tiny bit, and maybe find one or two options, or maybe even three if you feel, and give your CV to them, and just see who can pick up stuff. But don't give it to tons of people. Um, and I said, this gotta be a better way than just having basically agents be these paper pushers for me, because now all these teams are getting my info from all these agents. How are they gonna know who to go with? How are they gonna know my quality? Are they really selling me? No, I'm just part of a long list of athletes. So at that moment, I decided, uh, because actually Reed Pretty told me about a guy who was an Olympic um, athlete. He had the passed the bar in California and Missouri at the same time, and he was helping people get endorsement deals. All athletes at the Olympic Training Center that wanted one, they were coming through him. Also, pro beach players were getting helped by him. And he said, yeah, I can help you do the contract part if you can find the team. And I said, dude, I can find teams, there's no problem, because I will go and go and go until I find them. And it worked out. And about a year later, he said to me, hey, I have this business idea. And I said, does it have anything to do with having an agency and making my sport better? And he was like, yeah, exactly, let's talk. It was Elite Volley. We started it, we got to this point. In the beginning, you just heard the live stream with Therese Crawford. Um, this was a moment where I was national team, so I could use that those connections with the women and the men. And I got a bunch of players, whether it was Jen Joins um, to teams, uh, Chris Thomas, uh, Therese Cofford, obviously, and a bunch of other athletes, a lot of rookies coming up to the national team. And so that was a nice, that was my first little taste. I started to learn the back end. And on the back end, I started to learn that, you know, sometimes in order to get these jobs done, there would be things that I didn't know about, you know, like fees and, and money would exchange hands in different ways and and i saw some stuff that i really didn't like and so i knew i wanted to keep integrity as the forefront of everything and that i needed communication because that's what i lacked with agents so we went ahead with that plan we knew we wanted to create a website so that's elitevolley.com which will keep evolving and eventually be an app and we want to really push that to the limit so that it helps out athletes so how and why for for Elite Volley. The idea was let's keep the roster small, let's manage athletes, the number of athletes that we can just keep the quality high. And then let's try and place them with teams that we believe fit them because of their personality and the personalities on the court for the team that we know or the personality of the, the coach or even the management. How hard are they on players or how easy are they on players, you know? How quick are they pull, pulling the trigger to fire somebody or how lenient are they? If you're injured, how do they take care of you? How is that country? So all of these different things we started to, to basically try to implement. Fast forward from 2006 when I started the company until about four years ago. It was my second year with a young athlete called Melina Terrell, named Tarina, Melina Terrell. She was on, and by the way, if you go in the link in the bio, you can click uh, elitevolley.com forward slash start, and the first link in there is the Elite Volley or the Pro Volley 101 live videos that I'm putting on YouTube and you can watch all the ones that we've done. And those are massive because uh, Melina started and it was basically like, hey, I have this idea that education and mentorship can really help athletes stop all of this stuff that's happening and make better decisions no matter who they're with, but especially if they're with me because I knew that I was gonna treat them well. I knew that I will do everything to not let them fail and to help them succeed. So. 
that's how and why Elite Volley started. Um, our progress to date is uh, we've had many, many, many national team players. I'm proud to say that we have a lot of European national team players over the past 10 years too. And we're looking to keep that up. And we want two different types of, of athletes basically with Elite. Because we're small and we have 15 to 20 players per agent and we have two agents and one agent that's a potential agent in training but it helps us with international recruiting of youth, that's Vali Chaos. And Christy Swaggerty is the other agent. Basically we have like a USA uh, or national team pipeline concept. We want pipeline level pros, these pros that are elite level, maybe they haven't hit that peak yet, um, or uh, they have hit some really nice things, but they come from schools and conferences that aren't as tough, or they were on teams and they weren't the star star athlete on that team. We wanna get them over here, we wanna try them out in different leagues, see how they're gonna do in starter leagues, like Switzerland and Finland are two of my favorite places to place players because quality of life is amazing. It's beautiful, they are expensive, but you cannot go for money all the time in the beginning and the money is always given what's said. Plus the level is very competitive within that league which allows you to become that star player and that's what teams want. They want a player who can go get the job done no matter what. If everybody else sucks, if the set sucks, if the ball is different, uh, it does not matter. If you're getting yelled at all day long from coaches or players or you know the president, they don't care as long as you can get it done and you don't want to be in that crazy of an environment in the beginning sometimes. And then the second tier of athletes we have are probably going to be your higher ranked national team athletes. So the, the players who are coming out in first team All-Americans, maybe second team All-Americans too, potentially. It depends on if they're well-rounded athletes. Can you play six rotations, you know? If you come out of college and you are a middle or an outside that never really serves or you never really receive as a outside hitter or you don't hit back row, uh, it's very hard to find you jobs because overseas you're expected to do everything. They don't have unlimited subs. You're going to be on that court or you're going to be off that court. There's no going back and forth. So basically the progress to date and this idea of keeping a limited number of players is because we want you to get to these Euro Cups. We want you to show yourself. So for instance, right now we have athletes in Champions League in a few different countries. We have athletes in CEV Cup, which is the next down, which means you're usually those teams in CEV Cup are from all the different European nations. And they're like either second or third place, maybe even fourth in their country. And then there's CEV Challenge Cup, which is the third and bottom level cup, which is basically like anywhere from second place teams down to sixth place teams or maybe wild cards. It depends. It's based off of that last season. And why you want to be in that is because you're dealing with the top half or the top third of all of these countries' teams and you're playing international teams. So coaches see you and it's like, oh, wow, who is that player? Oh, I want her on the team next year. Or I'm telling this coach. So our goal is always to get players to Euro Cup teams, to teams that take care of them, to teams that we can ensure as much as possible through making sure we have contract conditions like labeling out what's the health care like, you know, what are the flight situations and the reimbursements like if you need to buy something for the flat that you absolutely need, if you need transportation from the airport, if you have medical, if that's out of pocket, how is that taken care of? Um, all of these things are part of the concept for how we do that. What we expect from players is this. I expect players to just really communicate with me. Be honest. How do you feel about me? How we're talking? How do you feel about this team? Feelings matter because emotions control what you do in life, how you respond to different stimuli. And if you're emotionally overwhelmed or you're not, and you're not communicating that to someone to help you grow that emotional side of yourself, it's always going to hold you back. So A, I'm trying to get the athletes to be less emotional, um, emotionally like, let's say, limited. I want them to have unlimited control over their emotional responses. So even if they feel something strongly, they can manage it and move forward and communicate it. And then what I expect is them just to be professional and let me do my job. So everything contractual, I take care of. You never, never, never do it as an athlete. And as a player, you want to seek out an agent who says like, listen, um, maybe they're not going to be as transparent as us. We're very transparent with, you know, sometimes the communication, how we're communicating with teams, what they're saying. We're trying to give players feedback. It can be overwhelming, but we want you to understand how teams think, how managers think, how coaches think about you, about what they need on their team, because they are very specific with what they're thinking about for the pieces that are going to make their special team that next year. 
So you're, you're A, looking for communication and transparency as much as possible. Okay, what jobs are out there? Who have you put me up for? Uh, what's been their response? Um, when I communicate you, with you via email or phone call or, or video call, we love to do, I love to do audio and video calls. I hope our players enjoy that. And I think they do because when you see the live videos, you can see that they kind of get along with that. But we have those every once in a while. Some players might need it more. If they want it, I will give it. If they, they don't want to talk, I'm all good. And you want an agent who can be flexible, you know, but you also want somebody, I feel like it's an advantage that I definitely know volleyball at this high level. So they're not always going to be players like me, but I don't think that's a, a terrible thing. As long as they can give you feedback or get that feedback from the coaches for you, maybe it's a coach that that agent can deal better with than you going to that coach. So maybe it's better if you say it to your agent, they go to the coach in their way, they deal with it diplomatically, and they get that response for you so that you know, okay, I just get back to work and I grind. Normally coaches are never gonna have anything against you or managers until you start being that person that's nitpicky, that's complaining, or you make faces, or your body language is poor. They want somebody that can take care of themselves and that manages themselves well. So just remember all of that. Um, so basically what these, what we deliver is uh, a few things, but really it starts with educating you and preparing you for everything that's gonna happen or could happen that first year, little by little. So we have uh, different processes for when we're thinking about signing you, when you sign with us, when you're in off season or when you're about to begin a contract to try to help you understand what do I need to be doing so that little by little, year by year, it's more and more and more hands off and you understand your role, the agent can just do their thing, the teams can do their things, and that's really, really important. So what we deliver is basically that education and then also promoting the players. We like to build an image. We make a Facebook uh, page for them so that they have a place to put all their videos and photos. So if they're injured or, or off season or in season, they can promote themselves. We can have that on their CV. I suggest to athletes before you even get to college, make a, a page, an official page for you. Don't allow people to come into your personal life without some kind of control on that. And that can be something that you grow to be something, okay, I want endorsements and whatever. Or it just remains your communication tool or your, your way to communicate with people or just to give it and let them consume that. So. That's what we do, and then on the side of making deals, we just make sure we ensure that the conditions of the contract are really good. Uh, we ensure that the team is upholding their end. We try to work really hard with them to make sure that that's happening and allow the player to just play. We promote you during season, and of course, we make sure that when deals come up, we let you know about it, and we talk about the pros and cons of all these deals. We try to get you connected with players who've played in that league, who've played for that team, or know players that played for that team connect you with the coach if possible, have an interview. We want you to understand that whole concept of what that may be like before you even choose to go there, right? The conditions and everything obviously have to fit. But then after all of that said and done, you and I are going over as an athlete or you and your agent should be going over, what are the pros and cons of these deals? How is this gonna help me? And so the next part of this and the second to last is um, vision and goals. For me, it's important to set players up long term. I want you to have a foundation emotionally, mentally, um, physically, and socially, right? So I want you to be able to speak with people well, with me, um, with your friends, families, coworkers, you know, uh, the agent, whatever, your team. But also, I want you to be able to have that emotional and mental clarity and strength, truly, to endure anything that's coming up, right? To be resilient. And then finally, I want you to be able to take care of your body. So we make goals for these different areas. Where are you weakest? Where are you strongest? Where should you focus your energy at different times of the year, right? And then what we're thinking about is, okay, so if you're thinking about these little goals to get to that bigger vision, okay, this is the kind of athlete I think that I can be. I wanna get there. I'm gonna set these goals for, let's say, a three-year plan for what that might look like just what kind of teams, what levels, what countries, what kind of money. And then I'm going to think smaller into that one season. And then I'm going to hone in on that one season. And that's all I'm going to be thinking about during season. What are my goals daily that add up to weekly goals, that add up to monthly goals, that add up to a season goal, right? And that way you can stay on track. Most players are not going to come over here and in year one or maybe even year two, maybe even year three, 
get to the level of their potential because there's so much growth. You step into an entire universe that's different than what you know. And when you think you're strong in different areas, you find out you're really not. And so now you're not, be, you're not able to perform, but you still have that dream. You still have that feeling inside. And yes, go after it. But you've got to start to be self-aware. And this is part of that emotional and mental um, and social because you need that external awareness and you need that internal awareness. Uh, how good am I? Where am I weak? Where am I strong? How am I? What am I feeling? You know, what am I thinking? Can I just sit with myself and have my thoughts come in and, and have my feelings come and not react to them, but just like process them and understand that they're there and there's signs and I can pick and choose what I'm going to read and respond to or not. These are massive, massive, massive things. So the last portion of everything is we, why we are education centered, because if you are empowered to be the best version of yourself as an athlete, but also as a business, then you have the best foundation to every single year you're building your personal foundation in season, off season, but every single year you're building up your portfolio, your CV. Why are you worth? 50, 100, 200, 400, 500 thousand euros a season. Why? Can you get the job done no matter what? If no, or if maybe, then you're not worth it. Teams don't want to take that risk. And if they do take that risk, just know that you are also taking a massive risk. And if you don't deliver, you are going to be set back. And that's okay. Setbacks are going to happen, but you've got to learn how to respond to that. And your plan has to help you get there. And if you're emotionally weak or mentally weak, and that's okay because you can always build those up, now you're going to be set back even more. You might start looking for culprits. You know, oh, it's my agent's fault. It's the team's fault. It's this coach's fault. It's these teammates' fault. It's the city's fault or the country's fault. No, it is you. It is us. We have to realize that, that at the end. So education for me on how to build yourself up, but also how to build your career up is massive. This can stop so much of the poor decisions and that's why we are centered like that. And that's why Pro Volley 101 exists because I wanted a way not only to educate our players, but I don't want to limit that. I don't want to be exclusive. I'm not trying to be, you know, a hoarder of this great knowledge that others have taught me and I have learned through others um, by just being aware and watching and making a ton of mistakes. Um, I want that to be available to everybody. So that's why I do these, this is, why I, this is why I take my time, but I'm devoted to our athletes 24 seven. So if somebody writes me and they say we need to talk, I'm on it. So for me, you can always reach out to me. We have a system on how to help athletes. What I'm always gonna say first is go to beyondathletic.com, my, my podcast, listen to the stories, the lessons that these amazing athletes, coaches, professionals have to help you grow. And then watch the Pro Volley 101 series on YouTube, like put it in or go to the elitevolley.com forward slash Pro Volley 101 and learn. All right, last question. This was the question and I think there are no questions from people. Let me check this thing. No, cool. Um, most rewarding part of playing pro from my perspective. I wrote down three things. I almost did this. Maybe I should do this. Number one is I learned who I am. I can't tell you how many times I felt so lost on this journey. I, I hit holes that felt bottomless, just free falling, not knowing where I was, who I was, what was going on, feeling alienated. I really enjoy the fact that I could go into nature. For me, that was massive. I would just walk, I would go fishing. I go fishing a lot. I love fishing, even though I kind of suck at it, but I love it because I'm at peace and I can just be tranquil and allow the chaos in me to unsettle and unravel and then just like take it in while in a good place where I'm not going to get bombarded by other people and their agendas or, you know, whether that's positive or negative, you know, I'm going to be able to just be with me. And so my biggest lesson was I learned who I am and I learned throughout who I am forcefully. I didn't have anything else. I knew that pro volley was what I wanted to do and I was going to fail or that's it. I, or I was going to succeed, right? So I succeeded, which is great. But trust me, if you only knew the failures, it's insane. And I want to tell you that you're not alone. You're going to go through some hard, 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 hard times. And I already feel bad right now even saying this. 
you need a team around you. Build a team of people. Every time you go to a team, find one person to freaking connect with. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. And then challenge yourself all the time. Find other people to be vulnerable with. Let them fuck that up. If they fuck that up, sorry everybody, but allow that to happen because you're going to learn. It's okay. People are not going to respond well to that and they might use that. That's okay. That is the end of your journey with that person. You don't have to give them anything back unless they want to come back at you in a positive light. So build a team around you by picking people to confide in, to ask for advice from, to learn from, whether that you ch like challenge yourself, tweet somebody, write them on Instagram, famous or not, whoever you, you think is awesome. And that's how I kept doing it. I just kept surrounding myself by all these people like Therese and Taiba Hanif and, and uh, Brittany Hochever and, and these Chris Thomas and, and other amazing guys, Chris Barnes and so many other people, the, the family that the two families that took me in when I left my father because of personal reasons when I was 17, 18, you know, and then I started building that other side of myself, the professional side. So that's how I learned who I am truly, because I always challenged myself. And I said, like, how can I physically push myself? Who are the best trainers out there? I'm going to follow their videos. I'm going to ask them for help. I'm going to see if I can pay this money out to get stronger, better, faster. Right. I'm going to look for mental and emotional support through friends, but also through professionals. Then I'm going to look for an agent. I was searching for an agent my entire career. Uh, at the end or, or in the middle, I decided on Sim Graton in Canada with Steve Welsh because I trusted the dude. I felt like he really was trying hard and he believed me and he was promoting me and I, I believed that. And so I would find deals. It was a great arrangement because I was already an agent and he would just handle the professional side. So even I let go of the reins of that. So I learned what I could control and what I couldn't. And I learned that I'm very good at controlling volleyball when I put my mind to it. And I'm very good at learning new things, but I have to stay in my lane. And the only thing I want to learn are things that are going to give back to me being able to do this very well, which is educate players, support them and help them get to where they want to be. So the other thing I learned was growth 360. I learned that the health foundation four things are so massive that you can never underestimate them. And if you're weak in one, you better start building it up little by little. Don't try to massively change everything. Just incremental change, 1% per day, per week. As long as you're gaining, you're getting better. Be patient with that. So I learned that emotional, physical, social, and mental are the massive pillars. And I learned that through a lot of education and looking up things um, that I needed to, to be great. And I'm still working on those things and I will until I die, but I'm gonna teach everything that I know to people who wanna learn it. And the last thing I learned was that I can express myself through volleyball. Volleyball, I still wanna play. Uh, and I challenge any of you 20 year olds to any kind of match, cause I'll still dominate you. But I got lucky with jeans. But anyways, I'm not, I'm not joking on this one. I, I learned how to express myself. Volleyball, I just watch people play. I, re I watch Reed, I watch Clay, I watch these stars on Brazil and Russia and Italy. And I just took and I picked and I chose and I built the kind of player that I wanted to be by just trying that stuff. Maybe not when I was being coached on a team and I didn't have the chance, but when I was alone, I was hitting balls, roll shotting, doing all kinds of stuff into a garbage can, into a basketball hoop against a wall, uh, visualizing it, trying to build that side of myself. So for me, it was just freedom of expression and allowing to show who I was through volleyball. And I didn't need anybody to go, wow, you're an amazing player. I just wanted to feel what it feels like to just do what I wanted when I wanted. And through volleyball, I was able to do that. And now my vehicle for that is really truly this mentorship. And through that mentorship, the main focus of mine for all ever, I want to do EliteVolley.com and I love it because for me, if I can help players achieve what I achieve, but way more, for me, I'm, I've, I've created success in the business world because I will have other things like real estate and whatever, like I teach my players, have some other passions and, and hobbies, but have a main focus, but something that you love doing. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening. If you like this, share it out. Don't hog knowledge. Give it to somebody. Give it to at least one person. For me, that's massive. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, comment, message me directly. I'm always open. You can find me at Ryan J. Owens on everything. J-A-Y. Thanks and good luck to you all. Be the best you can be and check out Beyond Athletic Podcast. Ciao.